Surveyor here, is the earth flat? Let's find out. I've got the instrument set up on that point there, which is FIPS, set by the highway division. Let's do some research. Here are the coordinates for those two points in decimal degrees. This is where I am located, that is my latitude and longitude, and this is the target which I will be sighting. And I come up with a calculated distance of 34.159 miles. But we've got a distance, let's get the height of the instrument above the monument. I've got a four, it's like a 466. So now that we have the data recorded, we've got both vertical and horizontal positions of the mark or point of observation to the target, which is Mount Wrightson. We can calculate what the angle of elevation or alpha angle should be on a flat earth. So this is where I'm located here, right above that monument, and that has an elevation of 2895. I then add the height of the instrument to it, which gives me an observation height of 2899.66. This over here is Mount Wrights, and I'll be sighting up to the summit, which is a little bit above that marker that's up there, and Mount Wrights has an elevation of 9456. Then what I wanna do is I wanna find this side of the triangle, because ultimately I want this elevation angle here. So I take this here, and I subtract out the total observation height, which reveals this opposite side of the triangle. And then I just use basic trigonometry to find that alpha angle. I divide this into that, hit the arc tangent, and I return an angle of two degrees, four minutes and 54.7 arc seconds. Earthers love to say that earth curvature calculators don't match reality. So here we are, this is reality. Here is the flat earth. There's my total observation height of a 2899.66. That's my target distance, and that's Mount Rideson. I calculated a two degrees, four minutes, and 54.7 arc seconds, and Walter Bislin calculated the same for the flat Earth prediction. Now let's see if the Earth actually measures flat. I've got a theodolite out here that just cannot measure curvature, so it must be able to measure flat Earth. As you can see, my dual compensator there is looking real good, both the trunnion and sight are just about looking perfect there. And there's my laser plummet. And we are dead smack right in the middle of that guy. So let's take a look and see if the earth is flat. All right, so basic geometry and trigonometry must dictate that this angle would be a flat earth angle. We've got a two degrees, four minutes and 54.7 arc seconds. I'm gonna round that up to 55. I've got a two degrees, four minutes and 55 arc seconds. Let's take a look at the scope and see if that crosshair is bisecting the peak of Mount Wrightson. Well, well, well. That opposite side of the triangle there between that crosshair and that peak, if I did the math on that, that wouldn't equal eight inches times a mile squared now, would it? Oh, what am I measuring? I've got a 152.20. And what does Bislin say we should have? Bislin says that I should have a 152.25. Now, what's the difference between what Bislin predicted and what I measured? The difference between what Walter Bislin predicted and what I actually measured is five arc seconds, but we wanna get that into feet. So we're gonna go 0, 0 minutes, and five arc seconds, we'll turn that into decimal degrees. Now we'll take the tangent of that and we'll multiply it by our distance in miles, which is 34.159, 34.159 times. Now we wanna get that value into feet, so we'll multiply it by how many feet are in a mile, which is 5280. I am 4.37 feet away from a globe but how far am I from a flat Earth? 
what we do is we take where it should be on a flat earth and we subtract out what we actually measured. The difference between those two angles is 12 minutes and 35 arc seconds. That's 12 minutes and 35 arc seconds. So let's do the same thing that we did to figure out what the difference was between Bislin and what I actually measured. We'll turn this into decimal degrees. We'll take the tangent of that. We'll multiply it by, I think it was 34.159 miles. Correct. 34.159 times, 5280 times, 660 feet. So there is 660 feet of drop between what the flat earth should be and what I measured.